joined us. Um, today we have Dr. Karam from Warfield Eye Hospital in Dubai. And she is a pediatric ophthalmologist and she's going to discuss how to keep our children's eyes healthy and um, hopefully touch on the effects of screen time um, for children and the effects on their eyes since, you know, I'm sure many kids these days are glued to their iPads. Um, so let's hand it over. It's, it's a very important topic, uh, uh, kids' child health nowadays, especially uh, COVID era where everybody is locked in a lockdown state and uh, kids mostly because there's not many activities to do. So they are just, as you said, glued to the screens. They are screen hopping. If they get bored with TV, they'll pick up the phone. If they get bored with phone, they'll go on the iPad. So nonstop, you know, one activity. And most of the time, these kids, you know, this generation, they are more visually active. They are a lot more activities that are vision oriented. And this is their world. So within 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, that's what their world is, all the activities are around the using their eyes. We need to understand that all kids, they are born farsighted. Most of them, majority of them, they should be born farsighted, which means that they can see far better as compared to near. So they should be outdoors. They should be looking far, looking at grass stuff, throwing balls, riding a bicycle. But if they spend majority of the time doing activities which need them to focus at near distance, what happens is because muscles in the eyes, they help you zoom in and zoom out. Yeah, they are just like any other muscle in the body. So if you're spending most of your time glued to your screen and zoomed in all the time, then brain is gonna get tired and then brain starts taking preference. So if one eye has better vision as compared to the other one, then that eye will become the dominant eye and the other eye will become the non-dominant eye and there's a chance that it can get lazy and by lazy i don't mean it starts moving right away lazy means that vision in one eye is going to develop better as compared to the other and that eye will eventually will start misaligning so this is the consequence of not having a good equal vision in both eyes so as i said um near activities, especially screens, they're not very good. Uh, try to uh, distract your kids when they are on the screen. Try to just uh, let them have, you know, water break. Tell them to, you know, go look outside the window, go do something else. Every 20 minutes, they should have a 10 minutes break. Pre-COVID era, I usually would advise only like three hours of screen time in a week. Nowadays, I know it's realistically not possible. So obviously we need to come up with different strategies. And one is distraction. Number two, just make sure that uh, they do a little bit of exercises, which are 2020 exercises. Like you look at something far, focus on something with the detail, and then zoom in and look at something near, close to your face with some character. So zooming out and zooming in, these are very good. Nowadays, myopia is prevalent. Um, uh, 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 you know, myopia is short-sightedness. And as you grow, myopia grows with you. So it's also becoming one of the issues. Uh, sunlight outside is very important. Not spending time on screen is very important. So um, all these things, not only that screens, they cause dryness of eyes. It's, they start rubbing their eyes, they start blinking, and uh, overall, you know, it just strains the eye. And you must have seen that, you know, when your child is on the screen for like two, three hours, they get irritable because it strains the eye, makes the um, vision a little bit blurry, and they don't know how to explain it. So when they don't know how to explain it, they become irritable. I hope it makes sense, yeah? Yeah, that totally makes sense. It happens to my kids all the time. My I could never figure out why, especially with distance learning, that they they get so agitated when it's like something fun even. Yeah. Or so they start to rub the their movement? eyes. Yeah. What? I notice mine start to rub their eyes. Like, yeah, so when you have a dry eye, 
So you see, when kids are glued to the screen, even if you talk to them, they're not going to look at you and, you know, uh, they can, uh, they'll keep on staring at the screen. This causes dryness and the dryness is typically like, you know, if you have like, if I can give you an example, a wiper on a windscreen of a car without water. So they are blinking on a dry eye and that causes irritation and that can lead to itchy eyes, watery eyes, rapid blinking. And sometimes kids, they do just these bizarre eye movements in which they don't want to blink and they are just like, you know, making these eye movements and that makes their parents anxious. So it's all related to most of them. They are related to dryness of eyes because of the screen time. Things that I've been worried about is the, the blue light protection. And now I know you can turn it off on your, on your phone, but is that enough? I mean, they've been selling these specific glasses for it. Um, and I know that I can't turn the blue light filter off on the TV. It's only on the phones and the iPads, but can you tell us a little bit more about that? So blue light, basically, when you go out in the sunlight, um, the blue light in the, uh, in the light, it regulates your circadian rhythm, yeah? Now, when you are in bright daylight, you're not gonna sleep because your circadian rhythm is functioning. Now, these kids, obviously, morning or day, they are in front of the screen. So the system never sleeps. So that causes um, uh, their sleep pattern to be, uh, it changes their sleep pattern. And number two, even if they sleep like six to eight hours, you're thinking like, okay, hey, they are sleeping well, but when they get up in the morning, they are still tired. And they are tired because the system has been altered by the being on the screen. So that's just in a purely layman terms that I'm telling you. There's a lot of scientific um, details behind it. But the thing that you can do is not make them be in front of the screen one hour before they go to sleep. Blue filter is very good. Some of the phones they have, uh, um, uh, smartphones, they have blue filter uh, technology. And I think iPhone has a night shift. So that can be deployed as well. And um, you can get these glasses. So I, because my, most of my work is in front of the screen. So I have the blue filters, um, uh, blue filter on my lenses as well. It doesn't seem, so it's, it's like a blue filter. It's like a, something pasted on the lenses. Problems you see um, in children in Dubai, typically made from allergies. Um, or what are, what are some common ailments that you see popular here in the region? So we see ages from all age groups. So, and uh, uh, as I said, most of the time, uh, the majority of our patients, they, have, they come for dry eyes, some ocular allergies. Now, uh, a lot of activities are uh, outdoor activities involve swimming. And because chlorine concentration can be a little bit different in different pools, so your child can be a little bit sensitive to the chlorine concentration in that particular pool. They're, they have a high chlorine content then. They'll come with red eyes, watery eyes, and uh, they'll, they'll rub their eyes. So it's better to just, you know, make sure that once they, it's it, like, it's important that they come out of the pool and take a shower, just wash their eyes with topical lubricants, or if you see, uh, them having red eye, just use the artificial tears. They are moisturizers. They are non-medicated. Anybody can use it. There's no brand for kids or adults separately. So anybody can use those drops. So this is one of the most common uh, thing that we see um, allergies from chlorine. And other than that, uh, because of the temperature variation inside and outside, outside is very humid these days, inside because we are in air conditioning all the time. That can also lead to dryness of eyes. So yes, mostly we do see that. Uh, the other thing is something called blepharitis. So if, if your child is consuming, um, so it's, it's a skin condition. It's, it's a condition in which your body is more oily. So when your, te your tears, they have a little bit more oil content that can lead to uh, styes or clasions or redness around the lids. Uh, so make sure that, you know, you're, kids are well hydrated, not consuming a lot of sugary food, uh, stay away from 
oily food. And other thing is like I see uh, parents, they make smoothies and they use a lot of uh, fruits that are high in sugar index and like don't mix bananas and strawberries. If you feel that your child is, um, is having those, um, you know, pimples on the lids or styes, uh, warm compressors and just keep good lid hygiene, that would be good. Hi, doctor. I have a question. Actually, I have my son will be two at the end of this month. And we noticed that he had a lazy eye in his left eye. But it seems to be getting a bit better um, the older he gets. But I don't know how concerned we should be. Like, do we, I mean, you hear different things from everybody. So do we bring him in? Does he have to get checked out? It Right now, when he does it now, it's more when he's sleepy or when he's kind of trying to focus on the TV or focus on something and then one eye kind of gets lazy. So let me get this straight. So that's, that's a very important thing. That's a very important symptom. So um, it means that whenever he's doing any kind of activity, the muscles, that's the first sign brain is telling you, you know, um, uh, muscle is getting tired. So basically you need to bring him for a, a quick eye assessment in which we can test for the power of the eyes. So now you see the power of the eyes um, should be symmetrical. Like for example, if you're far-sighted or you're short-sighted, power should be almost equal in both eyes. For some reason, if the, if the power is asymmetric and that can happen, you know, one half of the face can be different from the other half. If that happens, then the eye that has less power, brain starts looking after that eye and the other eye uh, in response to having a blurry vision will either move in or out. Now, the turning of the eye that is going out, it, usually it's not that dangerous because kids, they tend to grow out of it most of the time. The turning in of the eye is something that we take very, very seriously and we need to uh, check the power and the health of the eye. So I, I, would, I would say that it is important that he gets his eyes checked up. When he's tired or he's thinking of something or he's like daydreaming, uh, then you will see it going out. Usually, um, turning of the eye going out, we have a very good reflex as the as kids grow, the eyes they become more aligned, and uh, you don't see it majority of the patient. Only very very small percentage of the kids they um, need to be assessed regularly because uh, we don't want we want eyes to be locked in most of the time, and we don't want them to lose uh, the balance, the binocular vision. You know. um, so somebody suggested that I should get like an eye patch and put it over the stronger eye. This is one of these, um, uh, uh, we do these kind of exercises. So the treatment for eye turning out is number one, to make sure that the vision is good. Number two, the child does not need glasses. And if there are no glasses and there's no vision impairment and the vision is equal, the third option is to make sure that the eye that is turning out is also kept on working so like you put the uh, patch on the strong eye and you let the other eye do a little bit of work for half an hour or 40 minutes to one hour and that depends on if there's a difference in the vision usually it is not recommended if you have a very good um, 3d vision and we need to we need to assess whether the turning of the eye is more for near or for distance because then the treatment is different i hope and I have the hardest time getting her to sit down at a doctor's office and getting her eyes checked. Refuses to co cooperate <laughs> and get her vision checked. She won't sit at the chair. She, she just won't cooperate. My question was kind of the same. How do you get kids to cooperate? I guess I have to make her go. <laughs> well, I'm blessed with a very good team. And I think we have, we, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we can, we manage uh, almost all kinds of kids. I know. I know it's it's hard for kids. They are anxious, so it depends on that. We don't make it like you know they are being tested. We just play mm -hmm. with them. If the child is unhappy to come into the doctor's office, we just examine them out in the waiting room and we bring our tests outside and we do it in a very subtle manner that they don't feel overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. as I said, I'm blessed with a good team, so. Okay. If you bring her so if I make, 
Yeah, if I make an appointment there and then do I prompt you guys and let her you know that she probably won't cooperate? <laughs> she wouldn't even know that she's in a hospital. We'll try okay. our best to keep it as... Imagine that, you know, if your child is like sleeping eight hours, you get up in the morning, muscles are all healthy and active and first three lessons they are fine by fourth lesson they'll start getting tired and the muscle that is a little bit uh, working harder to keep up will be the you'll start the movement you'll see the movement will start and uh, it is better to have it checked up and uh, regularly monitored so that we don't end up with something which is significantly lazy and then not only glasses and the child needs patching as well so something which you have noticed as parents, it is better to get it checked up and then regularly monitor it. Okay. My second question is for myself. I have really bad um, eyesight. I'm like, I wear contacts since I was like 14. So one of my eyes is like a negative eight and a half and one of my other eyes is like seven and a half. So two different vision. Okay. And um, I considered getting LASIK before and I know you guys specialize in LASIK and other eye health issues and I was wondering how do you evaluate well I was a candidate to get LASIK when I was uh, before I had uh, I think before I had my middle daughter so about eight ten years ago and I had an appointment set up I was getting ready to go and then the doctor called and they were not comfortable um, with um, doing my eyes because my I think my cornea was too thin um, and so they they just said, we just don't feel comfortable doing the operations on you. Maybe technology will get better. So I just haven't gone back. Um, so do you do evaluations there as well? Absolutely. Before any procedure, you should evaluate, get an assessment done to see whether you're a good candidate for this procedure or not. Now, mm -hmm. post 10 years, since you have had your first evaluation, things are a lot better. We have got lot more better equipment technology and i'm not obviously i'm pediatric and mm -hmm. you see me wearing glasses but this is <laughs> nothing to do with you know being short-sighted or far-sighted that's something else so but yeah get yourself evaluated see how things are and if the doctor tells you that yes we are happy to proceed then that's okay but if the doctor say that you know you are we won't be comfortable doing this procedure but this is something else is available, then I would, you know. Well, I mean, just, just to jump on to answer the specific question on LASIK, we, we're currently running a promotion. So we have okay. a lot going on right now that's valid until the end of the month. So you can come in for a free assessment if you like. I mean, this is the first time we've ever done this, actually, where we don't charge for a LASIK assessment. Um, okay. And so, so basically, if you want, you can also get in touch. I mean, you know, Marlo and Jenny have my contact details. And if you if you want to, I can get in touch with you directly, have somebody book you in just to do an assessment. And that's where mm -hmm. the doctor will see whether or not you qualify for it before discussing anything else. Okay. Um, I, I'm interested in considering look, uh, looking into it. So my husband and I were discussing it earlier. So okay. thank you. No problem. Can I just clarify, how long does that the free assessment go for? Is it till the end of the month or? Yes, the offer is currently valid until the end of July. So um, we, we may consider extending it, but at the moment we're, we're, it's still on just until the end of July. Perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of circle back to your other question, Roxy, about um, having the kids assessed at more fields. And I just want to rave because I brought Marcel in and you guys all know Marcel. He, doesn't sit still you can barely understand him sometimes when he's speaking and we had to do a colorblind test because he wasn't able to identify colors and I was a hundred percent convinced that he was colorblind and had some sort of like sight issue but uh the pediat pediatric optometrist who saw him was like no he's giving you a run around uh <laughs> you know and he was he was able to do a full assessment of his eyes he, Marcel has a head tilt, so he does this, which is why we thought he was having eyesight issues, but it was all just his character, I guess you could say, and that all the doctors there and that everybody was amazing with Marcel. So it was a really good experience. So I think you should bring your little one in because it was a totally different experience than going to the regular doctor where it's all adult 
stuff. This one, it's geared for kids. So it's a little bit more of a comfortable experience for them, I think. Thank you. Yeah, and I took Chloe last year um, and she wasn't talking much. Maybe it was a year and a half ago. And they could do with blocks and certain things like you know, she couldn't read the letters across because she didn't, she was only two and a half at the time, but like she could read that if it was a house or a, like whatever symbol it was. So they have the equipment, like it's a pediatric, it's separate from the adult part. So they have like a special uh, entrance even for like the kids area with the waiting room. And um, yeah, so it was fine. I did both Jack and Chloe there and they had great experiences. Awesome. Bahravi has a, a question as well. She just raised her hand. Hi, Dr. Kuram. Um, yeah, my son Sid has been um, to um, Moorsfield twice. My husband's been there. So yeah, we're all uh, about Moorsfield. Um, my question is, um, he, he was treated twice there for some kind of an allergic reaction in his eye where he had just like red lines. And it, it turned out that he had some kind of allergy to maybe dust or sand. And he was just given like topical drops, uh, I think Tobrodex or something. And I've noticed he's had them, uh, he's had that um, again in his eye for the past month and a half. Maybe it's with all the dust. Um, we're constantly indoors um, and he's constantly on the, like, you know, with a distance learning on the screen and then whatever like games they're playing. So a lot more screen time. And I, since I was a little hesitant to go to a clinic to get it checked, um, I just put like sustained like art, um, lubricant, um, just water drops in his eyes. So they go, the, the redness goes away, but it comes back. So I just wanted to check with you, Dr. Kuram, do I, is it better I bring him so he can be tested and I'm given a prescription? So, for allergies, uh, one thing that we need to understand is there is no cure for allergy. We can treat the symptoms. Now, if the child is um, allergic to dust, anytime he gets exposed to it, he's going to get a red eye. Yeah. So you need to find out what works best for him. If it's the topical drops, I wouldn't say Tobradex. Tobradex is something which has steroid in it, stronger drop, and it is yeah. just Till, because when you start anti-allergy drops, it takes about two, three days before it starts working. So we have to give it under cover of steroids so that, you know, uh, the symptoms, they get better. Uh, so our sustain is um, a topical uh, lubricant. And if you think that the eyes are red after swimming, eyes are red after going to the beach, or even, you know, taking a hot shower or be, spending time in front of the screen, for um, quite some time, if the eyes are red, just just keep on moisturizing the eyes. Okay. Make sure that he's well hydrated. Yeah. Um, as long as there's no swelling of the eye, there's no discharge. He's not rubbing the eyes too much, and um, uh, he's not uncomfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to come to the clinic. These are all symptoms that can be taken care of by the topical lubricants. Um, okay. I am. Uh, in the middle of my clinic as well right now <laughs> and as you can see i'm wearing scrubs i've got a patient in theater as well uh and before somebody comes and you know drags me i hope uh you have a little bit better understanding uh, of how, what to do right now because of the COVID situation and being kids being indoors most of the time um i'll ask maha to give uh, to give my email to the group and if anybody has any questions i'm very good at replying to the emails so if you have any question you know just feel free just email me and i'll be happy to respond yeah thank you great thank you so much for your time no thank you so much for having me here it was fun and uh, guys have a lovely evening okay mm -hmm.